Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you very well. Okay, great. great. Thank you for having me. Thank you, thank you for being here and taking out the time in your busy schedule to provide us with a very nice presentation. No um, Jobayer, can you please introduce Professor Shaifu Islam? Anyway, yeah, are you hearing me? Okay. Yeah. Okay, can you introduce Professor? Yeah, of course. Uh, actually, there is nothing to introduce him. Uh, most of we know him very well. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I want to say a few words who don't know him. Uh, he is the lead author of the IPCC 6 assessment report, working group on. And uh, basically, he is the in charge of uh, remote sensing and GIS lab and climate modeling and simulation lab of uh, Institute of Water and Flood Management at Buet. And he is also the coordinator of uh, climate change study cell at Buet. So, I welcome Professor Islam for the presentation. Now the floor is for Professor Islam. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, yes. Um, OK, let me start then. Um, thank you very much for this uh, map fund and uh, for help mapping the types in Bangladesh, uh, organized by Delta Res and Bangladesh, Netherlands, uh, Water Youth Forum. So uh, my presentation is focusing on, on climate resilient infrastructure in coastal Bangladesh. Uh, basically, as uh, Jubair introduced me, I am uh, contributing to IPCC as a lead author in sixth assessment report working group one. So uh, I have also uh, actually worked uh, uh, more than uh, 12 years on climate change issues, but basically by training, I'm a civil engineer and then did master's in water resource engineering and then PhD is water environmental uh, engineering and um, uh, from Drexel University, USA. I think many of uh, you know me, maybe some of my students as well. So it's a very pleasure to talk uh, with all of you and uh, discuss the issues that uh, climate resilient uh, infrastructure, how we can make and out of the challenges and threats. So I am working as already Dubai had mentioned, um, the Institute of Water and Flood Management, where he's also a student, uh, did masters in there. Uh, and also it's a part of Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology. Uh, we call it BUET. So um, first I give a, a Brief overview. I think the is most of the participants from Bangladesh, Dubai, or from abroad. Yeah, most mostly Bangladesh, sir. But there are some participants from Netherlands also. Okay, okay. It's my pleasure to have uh, from different uh, uh, participants from different countries. So just very quickly overview. I saw other presentations uh, yesterday. Uh, there are many uh, actually intervention processes that impacted the coastal morphodynamics uh, in Bangladesh. Uh, uh, as you know, this is a delta of three big rivers, which is uh, from this side is Brahmaputra and Ganges, and this side is Meghna, and all are uh, confluencing in one point in Chatpur, and then uh, going to the, this side is Bay of Bengal. And this uh, is small country of uh, 55 uh, square kilometer, um, uh, but it has a lots of uh, variation in terms of uh, hydrological and morphological condition. And for coastal area, there are many actually processes that involve. For example, uh, there are many rivers that come from uh, Ganges and uh, Potta. This, uh, uh, this reach is called Potta. And, uh, they are actually um, uh, bring water and sediment. So in the monsoon season, they bring huge amount of sediment and uh, less uh, flow. The, again, that's the issue with the dry season. We found uh, many rivers actually die. As you know, the historically, uh, uh, there was a good amount of flow. But after that, the use of water uh, is increasing in the upstream and withdrawal by different structures like Barres, uh, Ganges Barres, Tista Barres. So all this actually intervent the dry season flow and reduce the dry season uh, flow. That actually changes the river morphology. Even some rivers have died. So many intervention actually occur. And that also not able to push the sediment into the, uh, into the uh, coast, uh, into the um, 
pay up that loan because if there is a less uh, uh, flow than the particularly dry season, there will be uh, more sedimentation or tide is acting, tide also push sediments to up. So recent year, we, we, we see the huge sediment flux. This is the active delta. But uh, on the other hand, there also there is a less uh, amount of flow that also uh, sediment distribution and deposition is uh, actually occur. And in the uh, uh, there is other processes like subsidence that we occur because we uh, uh, we actually embanked uh, the coastal area. There are 139 coastal uh, embankments. We call it polders, and uh, these polders actually. Um, uh, is preventing water to go to the uh, to the flood plain or tidal uh, plain. So that's an issue. It's uh, actually designed to uh, give the uh, boost in uh, agriculture production, uh, save crop from tides and SARS, but uh, it also affecting the sediment uh, flow and sediment actually is not able to go to the flood plain and it actually deposited in the, in the river bank. So the, then the salinity intrusion is increasing. As I mentioned, that fresh water flow during the dry season is decreased. Also sea level rise, bank erosion, tidal flow, cyclone storm starts is also an issue. And uh, heavy rainfall and water logging some area. And sometimes rainfall variability because of the climate change and we also see this area landslides and uh, extra, uh, flash flood as well so all this uh, morphodynamics makes coastal area difficult and protecting this area and make a, a more uh, i think agricultural production and to ensuring food security as well as the threat of the sea level rise and salinity intrusion is makes uh, difficult. So I uh, show the contest or uh, the area we are talking. I think everybody knows uh, the area. This is the folder I uh, mentioned that 139 folder, two to four meters. Sometimes its height is six meter, but currently it's go up to eight meter because uh, some folder is rehabilitated and its uh, height is increasing and through a project called CIP Coastal Embankment Improvement Project. And this area is uh, protected. And uh, this area, you can see it's a Shundarban in Bangladesh side. There are also Shundarban in the Indian side. So this uh, whole area is uh, protected with different uh, folders. Um, and then if we uh, talked about the pool, actually constructed uh, 1960 to 1970, completed by 1974 by Bangladesh Water Development Board, Ministry of Water Resource and around uh, 4,765 kilometer embankment and more than 1,400 sluice gates and regulator structure that's controlling water from uh, entering and uh, going out. So this uh, whole area, uh, the objectives to save the coastal folder in this uh, whole coastal area is to save Amon Pedi, which is uh, occurred during this time, uh, monsoon and uh, post-monsoon season is harvesting and from flood, tide, salinity. Later, people uh, uh, actually want uh, also the protecting from a storm surge. Initially, it was designed for flood, tide, and salinity, but it was added uh, the height and also it was uh, uh, give a defense from SARS, uh, uh, at least uh, some category of cyclone. But if SARS height is more than the polar height, definitely it will overturn. Also, if um, so, uh, so some cases we see the folder is actually breached, uh, like for uh, uh, the cyclone, super cyclone Amphan, which landfall in May 20, we saw that at 84 places the folder was breached. So, uh, for cyclone defense, folder is not really a solution. Uh, it, if it is a category four or five cyclone, uh, it is uh, the cyclone. Um, go and uh, they stay for a night uh, to to actually save lives. Uh, and uh, but the, this folder actually designed for flood, tide, and salinity. But uh, now sea level rise condition is added with this uh, and, uh, subsidence uh, uh, causes additional uh, actually um, 
uh, reduce the reduction of height. So older needs to be rehabilitated. That also Delta plan is mentioned to that older should be rehabilitated. And here you can see um, satellite image analysis by CEGIS. So they show the erosion accretion of Meghna actually from 1973 to 2015. As you saw, some area is, we uh, gained some area we actually lost. So uh, this is interesting. So uh, sediment uh, also play a big role uh, in the uh, coastal area. Um, I'm going to quickly have a look of the some of the natural disaster that we are uh, facing in Bangladesh, particularly in the coastal area. Uh, cyclone, cyclone uh, as you know, super cyclone when the wind speed is more than 220 km per hour, and this cyclone has a three minute sustained wind speed 240 km per hour. It's landfall on May 20th uh, in, in West Bengal, uh, close to the Sundarbon area. And this is the track of cyclone. And luckily, it's not landfall directly in Bangladesh, but it's still, it caused damage around. Uh, 13.6 billion and uh, total and Bangladesh side 1.5 billion damage of crops. Uh, some mentioned that 84 places the embankment has breezed and then it, it goes wa uh, water and salinity actually uh, damage crop fisheries, a school and other uh, houses and other uh, infrastructures. So uh, the fatality 26 in Bangladesh, 120 people actually died. Surge height is three to four meter. This is a storm surge height simulated by Buet using the Delta Rush software, Del 3D. Uh, it's the open source software that you can use uh, for simulating. And uh, that shows the maximum side is up to 3.5 uh, to four meters some places. And uh, we are lucky that it, the track is outside Bangladesh. And, it was not that, and this area is Sundarban, it was not that uh, sad side. If you uh, consider what are the actually uh, possible threat in the coastal area, we see the starting from the Bola cyclone, 1970, where 500,000 people died, which has a category three cyclone, which wind speed maximum was uh, 185 and one minute was uh, 260 kilometer per hour. It's a, it's a, one of the catastrophic cyclone in terms of human fertility. But if we consider the next cyclone, which is actually a, a super cyclone, where we just see 235 and category five cyclone occurred in 1990, where fatality is 100. Then we saw cyclone Cedar 2007. Uh, the death is reduced to uh, 3,447. It's the, another category uh, five cyclone, uh, maximum wind speed. 205 km per hour. We saw a cyclone in Isla 2009, Roanu, Mora, and last year we saw two cyclones. Cyclone Pony uh, is uh, in 2019 and uh, also Cyclone Bulbul. Uh, in Bangladesh, the two season is uh, cyclone is occur. One is pre monsoon, another post monsoon. During the monsoon, due to monsoon um, cir air circulation, the cyclone is not uh, actually formed. Uh, but after monsoon withdrawal, cyclone is formed. And it also need uh, some temperature, which actually favors during this two period. And um, we saw that this year, we already saw cyclone Ampan. Even monsoon period, we saw a monsoon depression. And this is a super cyclone. Uh, uh, you see fatality now reduced to 26, uh, considering to 1970, uh, 500,000 or more. Actually, uh, Bangladesh is now a role model at, uh, managing uh, cyclone and flood disaster. But on the other hand, we are not able to save our crop or damages. You see, this cyclone causes about 1.5 billion US dollar um, of damage. So uh, this is a challenge. How can we uh, uh, achieve the sustainable development goal by 2030? How can we become more resilient uh, from this natural disaster? And uh, cyclone, why uh, so many cyclones form? Because Bay of Bengal has a favorable temperature during this pre monsoon and post monsoon period, 25 to 27 degrees, uh, relatively warmer than Arabian Sea and uh, lower vertical wind shear, which is healthy. Hello? Uh, hello? Can you? Hello? Yeah, we can still hear you. Yes, I will mute. Uh, and, uh... Yeah. Okay. 
Yes, thank you. <laughs> and we see the additional moisture from South China Sea and um, uh, and also that a flat coast and a huge densely populated. And we see global mean sea surface temperature uh, as increasing at a rate of 0.11 uh, per degree centigrade. Uh, so it's all favors actually forming the tropical cyclone. And uh, we also see this year as a huge monsoon, um, uh, active monsoon, and that causes a, a prolonged flood. One third of the country was under water around uh, 40 days. Um, so that's, this is the flood inundation map uh, created by Sentinel satellite image. And you see this area, this is ECM, WFM uh, forecast, and uh, 10 days forecast. You see huge amount of uh, precipitation occurred actually foothills of Himalaya and also Meghalaya. So water comes from the Brahmaputra Basin. Uh, we are lucky that water did not come to, from the Ganges and uh, it caused flood in the Bihar, in India and also Nepal, but not in Bangladesh. But from the Brahmaputra, Tista, Dharala, Dutkumar, we observe flood. We also observe flood in the Meghna Basin. And this is the flood inundation area you can see. And uh, we found the flag peak as a positive uh, trend and also flag duration. This is the uh, water level above uh, danger level. You, you can see the 63 days uh, it was in 1998. And then this area is more than 40 days. And we found uh, the duration is slightly increasing trend. But more importantly, we found that the peak or maximum flood height is actually increasing. In fact, last uh, four years, we found uh, five years, we found four cyclones, 2016, 2017, 2019, and 2020. And if you compare the height, actually, this is 1988 height, which was the return to 100 years. But then it was actually increasing. And this year was in between these two, 20.78. Uh, so we found the cyclone actually as a flood a peak height is at Bahadurabad increasing. This is uh, not always the metallurgical condition, but the flood management, the polarization, urbanization, uh, reducing of the wetland, and many factors actually um, uh, uh, make a role on increasing flood inundation. Even a small country, we found different kinds of flood, as I already mentioned in the up, we see the monsoon. We see northeast uh, flash flood with the occur in the pre monsoon season. Uh, and uh, they had the Meghalaya and the highest rainfall occurring uh, area, the Cherapunji is there. So, this uh, hilly area uh, brings a lot of water, and that actually causes some type of damage in the pre monsoon uh, season. The only crop both damage. In 2017, it was damaged about 90% of crop. But in the coastal area, we see the uh, tidal flood and a storm surge. We see some area of the southeast Chittagong area. We see the flash flood and landslide. We also, recent day, we see the tidal flood cause or extreme uh, rain uh, is causing the urban flood or water lock. Apart from that, we also have uh, some area permanently water lo locked because of the sediment. Uh, in Bavadaho, we see the water drainage is very poor drainage condition. So these are the hazards coastal area. And uh, uh, for the sake of the country, uh, for the sake of the time, I'm not going very detailed, but since 2016, we have seen many natural disasters, uh, flood, cyclone, lightning, flash flood uh, uh, affecting Bangladesh. And one of the reasons that is um, world is going to global warming and world is getting more and more uh, greenhouse gas emission um, and IPCC is assessing and producing report periodically. But uh, the greenhouse gas, if you consider from 1880 uh, to till today, now it's a 413 parts per um, million um, ton of uh, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And it just stays around 80 to 100 years. So, so if we are not reducing greenhouse gas, that's uh, increasing, and that also increases the temperature. You see the temperature follow the path of the greenhouse gas. And that um, uh, that uh, not only increases the um, greenhouse gas uh, temperature, but we can see the projected the temperature will be increased more. As you know, that it could be uh, 5 degree or more. 
So it's it's a depend on the scenario. Even though we are following Paris Agreement, we are not able to um, uh, meet the requirement if we are not uh, taking a drastic measure uh, to reduce the global emissions so that the global warming in oil below two degrees centigrade. And it also uh, seen that from satellite image that huge uh, um, ice is uh, Arctic ice is melting, and there's also thermal expansion is uh, occurring. Uh, Greenland and um, Antarctic also lose ice sheet, and so all this actually contributing to sea level rise. And it's a scary that if you follow the business as usual path, it will go up to one meter or even more. So uh, Bangladesh is a flood delta coastal area is zero to five meters. So that would be impacted. And this is the projection uh, is a sea level rise. You can see the Greenland ice mass, Antarctic and glacier also melting and near surface permafrost also thawing. So all these actually uh, contributed to sea level rise. In the Bangladesh coast, this is a study by UK Met Office Headley Center uh, under a art regional climate change project uh, in Asia. Uh, they show that uh, extreme scenario, it could go up to 0.92 uh, meter by the end of this century. And these are the different stations in Bangladesh. You can find Chittagong, Hiron Point, and um, also Teknaf and others. But if we are able to follow the path of 2.6, we might have a maximum uh, sea level rise is 0.62 meter. So, um, uh, so it's it's this another challenge uh, to uh, for coastal infrastructure so how high it will be uh, better uh, or how much uh, the sea level rise will continue to rise if uh, this is a study done by our uh, department of environment we use the satellite altimetry data and we found that current rate of uh, 1992 to 2019 uh, the rate is about uh, uh, for about four to six millimeter, maximum six millimeter uh, in the coastal area, the trend is. That means uh, if uh, we multiply with the 100, that would be 0.6 meter. But unfortunately, uh, the more greenhouse gas will uh, introduce another process, thermal expansion, and so that it would, could go even further uh, and beyond. And so that's why, uh, and uh, this is another paper by Melanie Baker published in 2019. It shows that there is another process subsidence that I already mentioned. Rate is vary from one to seven meter, uh, some some area seven millimeter per year. So that means additional uh, 0.7 millimeter uh, meter can be added by the end of the century. So that means if we have a uh, sea level is uh, 0.6 plus uh, 0.7, that could be 1.4 meters. Right? So that's a scary. So we have to limiting greenhouse gas so that we will not uh, follow that path. This is a uh, paper on the uh, my student Khaled uh, is uh, conducted research at Buet uh, under the Helix project. We simulate the basic model SWAT, uh, which on the Brahmaputra, Meghna, uh, this can just make Brahmaputra and Meghna basin. Uh, we found that uh, the changes of the, these are the CIMIT-5 uh, data. We uh, simulate the model with a specific warming level when it crossed the 1.5 to a 4 degree. And uh, there is the model was calibrated. Uh, and then we found that uh, if we uh, have a look at the 19 percentile flow, these three basin, Ganges, Brokutel, Magna shows the increasing. And uh, the more warming, uh, like this is 1.5, 2, and 4, will increase actually the more uh, peak flow, high flow. And the duration of the uh, peak uh, above the danger level will be also increasing. We consider three stations in the Ganges Bronx of the Meghna, which are the outlet of the three basins. And so uh, the, you can easily see that uh, the in future we'll expect a more flood condition. For the coastal area, we simulated the coastal model del 3 d where we see the changes under sea level rise condition and uh, with this uh, increasing flow in the future. And uh, this is the bathymetry we collected and these are the strains. We're comparing our results and this is the bathymetry. Um, interesting, uh, see that uh, interesting thing we found that 
if we do not um, uh, increase the polar height, the coastal area with different sea level rise condition will be additional inundation, permanent inundation. Like uh, rise is called C.8 percent area and 0.5 meter sea level rise will cut 1.6 percent area of the country underwater. But the uh, Sundarbon will be affected more because it's not protected by the polar. So one meter sea level rise is 42 uh, meter, uh, 42 percent area of Sundarbon will be underwater. 0.5 uh, sea level rise will cause additional 11 percent of uh, Sundarbon underwater. So this is a challenge. But uh, I like to also say we did not consider the um, sediment flow or other processes just uh, to see what is the you know, permanent inundation if we have sea level rise condition. We also simulate different storms. We have the tracks. Uh, this is Cyclone Roanu occur in uh, May 2016. And uh, it uh, uh, occur and hit uh, Chittagong area, Bashkali, and other. This is the track. And um, this paper we published with the different sea level rise condition with the cyclone, uh, with the different known cyclones. We considered three cyclones. Uh, one is Ruanu in 2016, Ayla in 2009, and uh, Cedar in 2007. And with this different sea level rise condition, we simulate our coastal model, del 3 d and see how did the additional inundation affect um, uh, affecting the country. And uh, uh, these are the different sea level uh, condition of spatial chains. Uh, so uh, under different sea level rise condition, say sea only affected one point uh, inundated one point five percent of the country. Uh, Isla is one point uh, sorry one point two one point five percent, and for Ruanu we find point four six percent. But uh, if we consider the point uh, five meter, this area will be increasing, and some area will be actually increasing more because uh, the geo the geographic distribution some area doesn't is uh, polar protected some area. Uh, is uh, not a uh, uh, very uh, good condition in terms of the height of the polar. So um, with the different sea level rise condition, we have additional inundation area and that will impact additional people. And these are the results from different uh, cyclones uh, under sea level rise condition. Uh, we did not consider the changes of the atmospheric condition like the pressure of wind in the warming world. That could be another interesting study to see if, if the atmospheric condition change that we incorporated in the in the simulation how that will be in the future. But still, it gives an idea that the future will have more um, cyclone, uh, same cyclone could have more inundation and affect more people. We are currently a project by Oasis Rigs modeling platform where we see the. Uh, different past cyclone, 12 cyclone of, uh, we consider, and we are simulating. We are uh, simulating is a very high resolution model by Met Office Headley Center. Is a around uh, one is 1.5 kilometer, another is four kilometer. Because sometimes this uh, uh, atmospheric condition, uh, you need a very high resolution simulation. Otherwise, it's difficult to capture a subgrid scale processes. So. Uh, these uh, results will be published in Oasis Hub uh, by December. It's open to, so you can download the data. Atmospheric condition, wind, pressure, uh, another also, all the storms are type. So that's you can uh, use. And they have uh, nine ensemble simulations. Uh, these are the comparison of the weather forecast model simulation. Join uh, Typhoon Warning Center, JTWC tracks, and Edley Center ensemble simulation of five and six. Um, uh, I'm about to uh, close to my end of my presentation. Uh, I just like to mention a couple of things. Um, what Bangladesh is going to expect? That we saw different uh, publications. We did also many other paper from many other. Groups uh, try to summarize what Bangladesh is going to expect. We are expecting that more intense and frequent river flood drought would be severe and frequent. Uh, the student published another paper on drought, meteorological drought. 
and a flash flood expected to more severe and frequent in the future due to uh, global warming and urban flood will be more frequent and intense we will uh, going to uh, we are going to experience more prolonged heat wave salinity will continue to increase sea level continue to rise and cyclone storm surge will be more uh, flooding and uh, inundation area will be increased landslide will be frequent flood will be intense. So this is the coastal area, a circle where we have to think how we can make the resilient uh, coastal infrastructure. So considering this natural hazard, increasing also other processes like uh, uh, reduction of the flow by barriers, uh, like uh, making folders and so many other processes also interact. Also um, deforestation. Uh, this is a, a proposed embankment crest level for portal 32 i collected from bangladesh water development board uh, they are proposing that existing high is crest level is 3.3 meter it needs to be up up to 5 meter uh, and uh, it also needs to be widened because to maintain the slope so uh, so this is a, a proposal and uh, they are um, a project is already going on water development board, uh, is um, carrying out uh, project for 10 uh, folders uh, coastal region under CAP project. So increasing height up to six meter, up to eight meter, actually, and uh, widening some cases and extending actually to protect from uh, sea level rise and tide, uh, tidal flood or uh, SARS, uh, which are not, uh, I don't think that uh, if your SARS size is uh, more than eight meter, it, it could protect, but it can protect a cyclone that is not uh, high, very high category. <clears throat> uh, so another option is uh, not only make the coastal uh, infrastructure resilient, but also we need to think about limiting uh, greenhouse gases. Uh, that's more responsibility in the developed nation uh, because uh, adaptation has a limit and uh, we must mitigate uh, and that greenhouse gas emissions should be limiting so that uh, global warming should not be more than two degrees centigrade. That's uh, 195 states signed uh, under Paris Agreement in 2015. Uh, so, uh, and uh, net zero emission achieved by middle of the century so that a developed country should get more uh, support for uh, adaptation and also mitigation uh, to reduce the greenhouse gas. And uh, there is a promise that uh, 100 billion US dollars fund should be uh, from 220 onward for the next five years. Uh, so uh, we still don't see that. We see only 10 billion uh, US dollars there. So there is more negotiation will need to be done in the future. And this is a, a paper published in uh, Nature. There is a uh, we, if we follow even uh, Paris Agreement, we are not able to actually meet the uh, requirement. So we need more uh, pathways to uh, fossil fuel uh, cut. We need to uh, follow the green pathways. So this, this shows that even if we follow the Paris Agreement, the, 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 it should not be enough. Uh, these are just some of the publications. You can find my website. Uh, there are also a number of paper already print accepted paper by Jamal and others. Uh, so you can find uh, from Twitter website. Uh, this is on cyclone and storm surge and uh, some papers on flood and climate change. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Professor, for, for this very interesting and insightful presentation. Um, uh, I think we in, in, a, in a short amount of time we learned, we learned a lot. Um, and do we have any questions from the participants? We have one with chat. Um, ah, yeah. uh, what is the methodology applied to process satellite altimetry data for water level observation? And which satellite data was considered in this particular case? This is uh, Mr. Sa or Mrs. Sa is asking this. Okay. Uh, for the bathymetry, we use the JEPCO data. We also use other data. Uh, like uh, our own survey data and BIWD data. I'm sorry. Hello. Yes, we use uh, different uh, data source, uh, starting from satellite-based data, uh, also the our own survey under a project Spadelta, 
and we also collected data from Bangladesh Water Development Board, uh, Bangladesh Navy. So all these, uh, Navy has a chart, uh, we uh, accumulated and uh, refine our DEM. And this needs a, a number of years actually to refine the model and calibrate it well. So we are now uh, confident that model is working fine. Thank you, Mr. or Mrs. Sa. Is your question answered? If we don't hear anything, I think it is. Uh, oh, yes, we see yes in the chat. Um, and a question from, from our side, because this map, in this mapathon we will uh, map the, the embankments in Bangladesh, the location, uh, the current location of the embankments. Um, how do how do you think? How is um, what kind of maps do you norm, normally use? Because I've seen that you use the BWDB maps, and um, what do you think about this this effort uh, that we that we do in this mapathon? Um, um, there are different sources. Uh, we use the map. Uh, um, we use uh, from uh, maps produced by um, LGD. We also use the, there are standard administrative boundary maps. We also de uh, developed our uh, own uh, maps like inundation maps from satellite image analysis. Uh, but all the sources actually uh, we used. Uh, and there are, um, in the past, there are project, one project by FAR, they developed uh, Bangladesh um, uh, different maps. Uh, which we have uh, collected. And uh, sometimes the administrative boundary is um, actually updated. So unfortunately, we not always get uh, the updated map because uh, some organization did map say two, three years ago and some Upazela has changed their boundary or unions is uh, now under another Upazela. So this is a continuous process. and. Even we, we in the past, we have a four division now, we have eight division. So always we have some changes. But uh, some of the global maps like uh, USGS maps, uh, soil maps from FAO, uh, like SRTM, uh, satellite data for DEM, we also use. So wherever we have, uh, we don't find very fine survey data or map, we use the global map from global repository. And many organizations around the globe actually uh, published this map in their website. You can find uh, from there. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Jobayar. Maybe you have some, yes. some a reaction on the presentation. Uh, I have a question. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, Asif, you have also a question. Okay, uh, sir. Uh, in the end of your slide, you showed a figure. Uh, there was mentioned that uh, you guys have figured out a suitable height for the newer embankments that you are trying to uh, suggest to the government or the other organizations. Uh, my question is, uh, as you know that uh, the south western part of the polders has a greater, a little less height than the middle portion of the polders, right? So are those embankments or uh, will be suitable height for all the polders? Or you just uh, have made it in an average? No, uh, no. let me uh, clear that. Uh, actually, this is not made by me. I mentioned that it was from uh, Water Board publication. Um, when the CIP project, Coastal Embankment Improvement Project, is undertaken, they did a study. And I believe uh, Institute of Water Modeling, IWMD, did a study and uh, find the appropriate height considering climate change. and. Uh, they use uh, MIC uh, models, uh, but BUET, we use open source. Uh, we are an academic institute. We use Delta RAS model. But your question is very valid. Uh, in order to find the, you need to uh, simulate uh, for the area to see uh, how much height is required uh, considering sea level rise condition. So it's not fixed along the coast. It's 139 polder height is different. That's why it goes up to eight meter from uh, four meter. Uh, so it's it's you need a study before we uh, invest uh, uh, thousands or millions of dollars. And CIP project, I believe it's around nine hundred million dollars, and they did this study before uh, investing in this area. But uh, my 
comments to you that if we continuously uh, increase in greenhouse gas, uh, uh, that's a problem because then sea level could be two meter, even 1.5 meter, because there are other processes in coastal area like subsidence, like uh, sediment flow, uh, like uh, uh, as you know that. The and so that all accumulated, and uh, we also uh, were facing problems with uh, different. Uh, Areas so for water logging, uh, bed level rise. So all this actually making more difficult. So if we are not limiting greenhouse gas, that would be additional uh, problem that we currently have. Thank you for your question. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, actually, uh, you uh, mentioned uh, in your presentation that uh, in cyc super cyclone, this is super cyclone, uh, 84. Uh, places uh, the yeah. embankment has breached and uh, we are investing more and more and our mapathon mm -hmm. is uh, looking forward to map the updated status of the embankment uh, so this uh, uh, this uh, type of disaster are more frequent and embankment will breach in, in the next time when the other cyclone will come on so and the people also expect that uh, um, uh, there will be a big structure that will, will keep them security from the disasters so uh, in this uh, dynamic delta how can we manage this situation and i can we secure our property as well as the people what will be a resilient solution yeah excellent question actually you were i really like that you measured some of the damage actually uh, I hope Bangladesh Water Development Board and uh, other organizations, those who are managing holders, uh, will uh, actually make this whole uh, embankment uh, digitally visualized and available so that anybody can click the folder and download the shape file. And, uh, you know, it is nowadays uh, possible that people can upload their photo if. Uh, if Folder is damaged, so it's a it's a special uh, uh, inclusion or a special mapping inclusion of the community. And I uh, I think uh, we have to move from the uh, map printed map or uh, like a old version the way we did last 50 years or 100 years. We have to move from that to the uh, online version so that you use the google art and other shape file kml file if you click you know that uh, this is the embankment situation height width slope and everything and this is the uh, this organization actually is public money so i don't uh, feel that that should not be uploaded and it should be so that people if any breach occur people can upload their photo so all this uh, is possible i think community participation and a special GIS with the community is essential because it is also impossible for the government official to uh, go uh, this 4,765 4, kilometer older every day. So people, community can inform them better that this area is vulnerable, this area you have to do that. So uh, even policymaker can one click, uh, they can have a look of the older situation, what is the current condition, what are the project currently done, what are the projects? So this uh, special GIS information uh, management system is essential. I hope that they will uh, move forward to the dissemination in information in the way uh, so that people can also participate and know what is the condition of my folder. When it was constructed, uh, is there any breach there? Which cyclone breach that? As you mentioned that uh, there are other cyclones may come. Bay of Bengal is now uh, breeding ground actually many cyclones because of the global warming and other processes so uh, we need uh, this kind of a special information okay. and thank you sir. hopefully you can contribute then more <laughs> yeah. we also thank you okay, professor Shah. yeah thank you Jupai yeah. and professor Shaifu for the excellent answer and uh, uh, looking ahead. I hope from the Bangladesh Netherlands Water Youth Forum we can or we are able to contribute in, 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 in developing this more online environment and um, uh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm very sure that we will have similar assignments, similar sessions and we will definitely ask you again to participate. So, okay.
Bangladesh Netherlands Water Youth Forum and the participants. Thank you very much for your time. We know we have a very busy schedule. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you for your contribution. And we hope to see you again. Thank you very much for Delfaras and uh, Youth Network for organizing this and give me opportunity to share our work and do it again uh, is very open and hopefully we'll contribute to our collaboration with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Okay, um, I think we have come to the end of our session today, correct? So once again, thank you for everybody for joining. Um, uh, uh, please uh, 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 feel free to stay along if you want. Um, the group work is ongoing, yeah? So please um, uh, go on with your group work and we'll see you again Thursday, same time, same place. Any additions? Yeah. Nishal, yeah, I need to make some additions because many of the participants are asking today that how we are going to, uh, what is the deadline for submitting the group report and the presentation or how through which medium we are going to submit it. Uh, to address that question, uh, we have decided, Frederick, if I'm not wrong, we have decided that the time will be one hour before the program starts on Thursday. So that yes, would be sure. 2 p.m. in Bangladesh time on Thursday. So you can... Uh, upload your group report and presentation uh, via a Google link. I will be sending you a Google form where there will be an option to upload both of those files. So you can upload it and that link will be sent to you on when, uh, 18th of November. That is one day before the final program. So keep checking your email and you will receive all the instruction in that email. So thank you. Good. Thank you again. If we have no more additions, then uh, very much uh, Please feel free to stay, but uh, we'll we'll go ahead uh, and leave now. So thank you all. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone. See you on Thursday. See you again. Bye. Bye. Bye.